Hello everyone and welcome to Python programming practice. In this episode we're going to be covering leak code number five called longest palindromic substring. This is classified as a medium difficulty problem so it might take some doing to get the answer. I'll start by reading through the description and the examples. Given a string s Return the longest palindromic substring in S. It's not a very detailed description there, but let's parse out what that means. Basically, a palindrome is a string of characters that's the same forwards and backwards. So if you reverse it, it's the same thing. So the longest palindromic substring of a bigger string S would mean all the different substrings within S, what's the longest one of those that is also a palindrome, so that's also the same forwards and backwards. Let's look at a couple examples to see what that means. So example one, this input string is this, B, A, B, A, D, and then the output is B, A, B. That's the longest substring within S that's the same forward and backwards. We can see that S itself, if you reverse it, that's not the same because the first and last things are different. And I guess both of the four length possibilities are also out because that, if you reverse it, that can't be right because there's the different thing at the beginning and the end. And this one, there's something different at the beginning and the end. So the longest thing that we have is length three, this B, A, B. If you reverse that, it is actually the same thing. So that is the output of the first example. Example two, C, B, B, D. I guess in this case, the output is B, B, because that's the same forward and backward, even though it's just one letter repeated, it still counts as a palindrome. And that's the longest one there. I guess if the input is just a single letter, that's an easy one. It's just, we return the single letter back. A, a one letter string is a palindrome, I suppose, because you reverse it and it's still the same thing. And then if we had just AC as the input, we could just return A because the longest palindrome there is just a single letter. So we're also given a couple constraints here. The length is going to be between one and 1000. So the length of the input string. And the string is only going to consist of digits and English letters that are lowercase and or uppercase. Now, it's not making a distinction between whether lowercase and uppercase should be considered different or not. So I guess technically we would consider an uppercase A to be different than a lowercase A. So we'll just kind of treat those as if they're different letters. So let's pull over to the code editor now and start thinking about a solution. I think to start with this problem, I'm actually going to define a helper function right away that lets us check whether something is a palindrome. We're probably going to want to be checking whether various substrings are palindromes a bunch of times. So we can write a helper function to allow us to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and write this in a pretty short way here. Def check palin. We're going to take an input string s just like we're given and then we're just going to return whether s is equal to the reversed version of s and we can do that with this kind of slicing operation trick so all this is going to do is take some input string and see if it's the same as the reversed version of itself if it is, that's a palindrome, this will return true. If not, it will return false. So this helper function should come in useful later on when we're checking whether substrings are palindromes. But to think about solving the greater problem, let's pull over to the whiteboard really quick and see how we might think about it. So I've written down a string here that does have a palindrome in it, but the whole string isn't a palindrome. And how would we go about finding what the longest palindrome is? Well, one way we could go about this that could work is simply check all of the possible substrings and whether they are palindromes or not, and then return the longest one. And if we check the longest substrings first, and then we can just return whatever we find as a palindrome because the shorter ones are coming later and we're only interested in the longest ones. So how that might look like with this string here, well, first we'd check the longest substring if it's a palindrome. Well, the longest substring is the whole string itself. So we'd look at that 
we'd pass it to that check palindrome function we wrote and see if it's a palindrome or not. It isn't, so in that case, we'd have to begin checking shorter substrings. So then we'd check perhaps this one, length four, and that's not a palindrome. Then we check this one, the other one that's length four, that's not a palindrome. And then we just continue drilling down into smaller and smaller substrings. So next we'd check this length three one, that's not a palindrome. We check this length three one, that actually is a palindrome. So at that point, we could immediately return this substring because if we are checking in longest order first, as soon as we see a palindrome, we know it's the right answer and we can return. So this might not be a super efficient solution to the problem because if the string doesn't have any palindromes in it until the single letter version of a palindrome, we could end up having to basically check every single substring long until we get to that point. So the code could be pretty slow, but this should be a way to do it even though it's kind of a brute force solution. So back in the code editor now, we are going to do this solution, we'll call it check all substrings. So what we want to do is loop through all of the possible lengths for substrings, but start with the longest ones. So for length, for the possible lengths of sub substrings in range, well, the longest substrings are gonna be the whole length of the string, so len s. And we want to start with the longest ones, so we're starting with len s, and then we're going to go down to the shortest ones, so all the way down to zero. And to go backwards, we say minus one. So basically here we're just iterating through all the different possible lengths of substrings, starting from the longest ones. And then for each one of those possible lengths, and now for each one of those possible lengths, we also have to loop through every possible starting position of a substring with that length and then check each one. So for the for the first one that's the whole string, well, there's only one starting index position for that, it's just index zero. But in the next case, when it's one shorter than that, we have to check two substrings and then three substrings, etc. So basically for start index, so for some starting index in range zero, the first one is always going to start at zero but then we need to check a number of substrings that grows one with each iteration. So to do that, we're going to set this range to go to the length of our string plus one, but then we are going to subtract off the length of the current substring we're checking. So basically as the length of the substrings we're checking shrinks, then the number of starting indices we're checking for that for loop grows. So as we get deeper, we're basically checking shorter and shorter substrings, but we're checking more of them. So now all we really have to do is inside this for loop, we have to check whether the substring we're looking at is a palindrome or not. And if it is, we'll just return it. So if we called this function check palin, and now we just have to be careful about what our substring is gonna be. So we're starting from this start index that we have here, and we're just going to go up until the start index plus the length of the substring that we're looking at, we called that length. So if this is true, that means we found a palindrome and we, we should just return it. So let's take out that substring that is a palindrome. If that is true, we will return it. and. We actually don't need to include any extra return statement after this because eventually if there isn't a palindrome longer than length one, well eventually we'll get to length one substrings with this loop and then the first one of those we see will just be found to be a palindrome and it will return. So we don't need anything outside of the for loop. Eventually this will return with whatever the palindrome is even if it's something that's length one. So we'll close this final brace here and then hit submit on this one. Now, if we didn't make any errors, that sh this should be a working submission, but it might be pretty slow. So medium problems sometimes require faster speed than we might get with this. It's taking a while to judge. Let me pull over and see what the result is. So this, this was a submission that worked. So logically it does solve the problem, but it wasn't that fast. We see the runtime was a bit over seven seconds. So it was only faster than about 18% of other Python 3 submissions. So it was fast enough actually to pass the grader, which means 
it wasn't like the slowest thing imaginable, but it still wasn't very good because most of the other submissions were faster. So let's pull back to the whiteboard and think about how we might be able to find a solution that's going to be a bit faster than the one we had. So basically what we want to do is avoid checking every single substring and perhaps avoid a double for loop where within each of the loops we're doing a palindrome check because that could be something on the order of like n cube type operations. We would want to find something that maybe we're only looping through once and then we can do some checks on that. So one insight that's important to have about how palindromes work that can help us solve this is that a palindrome has a given center and then everything within the palindrome around the center also has to be a palindrome. So one way we can think about solving this is we can check all of the different possible centers for a palindrome and then see whether there is actually a palindrome starting there. If there is, we can extend it in both directions until we find the biggest palindrome for that center. And we can just continue doing that for every single possible palindrome center that there is in the string. So let's give an example of what that might look like. So one potential center is just the first character. And that's not a very interesting one because we can check the first thing. Well, obviously a single letter is a palindrome, but then if we wanted to extend the palindrome from that center, we'd have to extend it one this way and one this way to check a three length palindrome. But for this case, we just stepped off the front of the string, so we can't even check that. So for this zeroth index, we can really only check a one length palindrome because as soon as we try to make it wider or extend it, it just steps off the front. But what if we started instead with B as our center? So the next thing, well, we could check that. And we, we know that a single length string is a palindrome for sure. So we don't even really have to make that check. We can immediately extend one to each side and check whether that's a palindrome. And in this case, it isn't. So since it isn't, we don't need to check anything bigger than that because if the center isn't a palindrome, well, anything extended off from that wouldn't be either. And in this case, we'd also be stepping off the front if we extend it again. And then we could check the next one. So the next center would be C and we could check, is that a palindrome? Oh, yes, it is. So we'd find that it, we at least have a palindrome of length three now after checking that. We could extend it again and then we check this one. Well, that's not a palindrome. So we'd store in our back pocket, we found this one of length three, and then we could continue doing these checks for every single position. And after doing that, we can just track whatever the biggest one is. And then after doing our loop, we'll know what the biggest one was and return it. In this case, we just return the three length one that we found here, BCB. Now there are a couple other things we should be thinking about if we're going to try to use this solution. There's actually kind of two different centers a palindrome can have. It can either be an odd length palindrome, in which case there's just a single letter at the center, but we can also have palindromes that are even length where there's two letters at the center. So for instance, we can have centers that are kind of between each of the letters where the center is actually a two letter pair. And we'd also have to account for that possibility. So we'd have to check like a substring starting with this and extending off one each side there and check a four length one, a six length one, etc. So we'd kind of need to do two different checks one for centers that are for odd length palindromes and one for even length ones. Another important thing to consider is that since we're only looking for palindromes that are the longest, that can save us some work when we are checking new palindromes with a new center. For instance, if we found this palindrome that's length three, well, at that point, all we care about are palindromes that are bigger than length three. So when we're checking a new center, say we moved on from that one to this one, well, we don't even need to check this three length substring now because three isn't bigger than what we already saw. So we can go ahead and immediately start from this center, but check something that's at least one bigger than that. So we'd step out to five 
and we can just keep growing like that. So we're basically going to have to keep track of some kind of kind of step variable that can tell us how big of a substring we can take at the current center every time. And by doing that, we can just save ourselves some work by only looking at substrings that are going to be bigger than the one we already saw. So let's go ahead and drop back to the code editor here and see how we might be able to code this up. Now, let's just make some space. We'll probably want to use our check palin function again in this solution, so we'll just keep that at the top. But we'll have a second solution here called perhaps uh, grow from center. So we're going to need to start by just initializing some variables that's going to keep track of things for us. So we needed to keep track of our current biggest uh, substring that's a palindrome. So to start off with, we can just set that to S0 because we know the first letter itself is going to be a palindrome. It's just a single letter. So we'll start off with that as our first scene one length palindrome. And then we can go up from there. And we're also going to keep track of that step. So how far we should step out from the center when we're checking our next palindrome. Basically, that's going to be something like half the length of the biggest one we've seen so far. So let's say step is going to be equal to the length of the biggest one we've seen so far. And then we'll just do floor divide two. So when we are starting off with, we're basically not going to have a step because one floor divide two is zero. So in that case, we'll just not have a step. But then as our biggest um, palindromic substring grows, this step will grow and it will allow us to only look at bigger and bigger substrings. So now we have to implement the logic of looping through all of the centers and growing substrings out from each center until it's not a palindrome anymore. Um, and we're gonna kinda do two different passes on this for each of the different center possibilities. So we'll start with the single letter centers that are for when there's gonna be an odd length string. So we'll say handle single letter centers first. And for that, we're going to say for center in range one comma len s minus one. So basically we're gonna consider every single index position from index one to len minus one to be a potential center. The reason we're not checking index zero, well, we already initialized index zero here. So, and we know that that's at the very beginning of the string, so we can't extend it at all. It just jumps off the front, so we don't need to look at that. And then the same thing goes for the last index. Like we don't need to grow anything from that center because it can only be of length one anyway. So we're going to just exclude those. And now we're going to define the bounds of what the substring is going to be. So that's we're going to define that as a two length list. And the bounds are going to be our center index minus one plus that step length that we defined. And right now the step length is zero. And then the upper bound is just going to be the other side of that. So instead of minus one plus a step, I'm gonna say plus one plus a step. So basically that's just extending the bounds out by one in both directions from wherever the center is because we know we don't need to check anything that's only of length one. We already found something of length one right away. So this is for the first pass, basically checking something of length, a substring of length three. But then as we increment the bounds, it'll grow it to length five, length seven, etc. if we keep finding substrings. So basically as long as we can extend our substring one in both directions, and that's not putting us off the front or off the end of the string, then we want to keep doing this loop and we'll continue doing it until we find something that's not a palindrome. So while our bounds zero, so while the first or lower bound is greater than minus one, so something that actually exists and the upper bound, which is bounds one, is less than our length of our whole string. We don't wanna go off the end of the string. 
So while that is true, we just want to check whether the substring we're trying to look at based on those bounds is a palindrome. So let's use our uh, check palin fun function here. If check palin of our string s within those bounds, so we're going from bound zero at the bottom end up to bounds one, but we actually have to do bounds plus but bounds one plus one because it's non-inclusive the way uh, Python slicing works. So we have to do plus one here. So if that's true, we just need to update our biggest palindrome scene so far with what we're looking at, because that means we just grew to a bigger palindrome and it's bigger than anything we've seen so far. So we'll say biggest is going to equal that substring. And now also when we save a new biggest substring, we're going to increase the step size based on the size of that new substring. So we'll just say the step size is also going to be updated again. We just we can just recopy this code. It's going to update it again based on the length of that new bigger substring. So now all we have to do after confirming the next biggest palindromic substring is increase the bounds for the next iteration of the loop. So we're going to say bound zero is going to be extended one in the minus direction and bounds one is going to be extended up one. So plus equals one. So basically this is saying is if we actually have a palindrome with these bounds, we're going to store it and then make it wider and then the next iteration of the while loop will go and it will check that wider widened by one uh, possibility and it will just keep widening and widening until it either hits a point where the substring is going off the front or the end of the string or we find something that isn't a palindrome so the else case here is just that well if check palindrome is false it wasn't a palindrome so we want to stop checking this particular center so we'll just break out of the loop in that case so after running through this whole logic here we will have found the longest palindromic substring for centers where they are in going to be a single letter so an odd length of the total substring so basically all we have to do is do the same thing here but for handle the case where uh, centers have two letters so the other type of center, so we'll handle double letter centers. And a lot of the logic here is probably going to be similar, but the ranges for the indices are going to be a bit different. So for center in range, so we can actually start at the length of the step that we've already recorded. So basically, if we already found a substring that's kind of long, we don't need to start at the very beginning because we're going to at least need to allow for substrings that are at least longer than that. So we can start at the step here and we will go to the length of the whole substring minus the step minus one. So basically, we could be going from zero to len s minus one. But since we know that we have a substring that requires us to have something of a certain length, that's why we are starting at step and then going to len s minus step minus one. It's just potentially saving a little bit of work by doing that. And now we have to set the bounds. These are going to be similar to the bounds we set for the odd numbered case, but a little bit different. So in the odd numbered case, we basically started with a certain center and wanted to move both of the bounds, the lower bound down by one and the upper bound up by one because we wanted to start with substrings of at least length three because we already had the single letter case of length one. But in this even numbered case though, we have to start with substrings that are of length two. So we don't want something that's three wide. We want to start with account for things that can only be too wide. So basically to do that, we're going to, instead of doing center minus one end step, we're just going to take away the one here. So we're not going to decrease the, on the front side by one. And we'll, we'll keep this the same because we want to extend it up to length two. But now that we have the centers set up and the bounds 
correct for the even numbered version. It's just slightly different than what we had to do for the single letter centers. All of the other logic is the same. We still want to check if the bounds are jumping off the front or the end of the string, so that's the same. We still need to check if they're palindromes within the specified bounds, and we still need to do all these updates and all the bound incrementation. So essentially all of this code is going to be exactly the same within this uh, double letter version. So let's paste that in there. And so now we have one pass essentially that's handling the single letter center case. We have another pass handling the uh, double letter center case, double. And after these two passes complete, whatever is left in biggest should be our biggest palindromic substring. So we just have to return it at that point. So let's say return biggest. And now as long as there aren't any uh, errors somewhere in the code here. Uh, this should be a working solution, so I'm gonna go ahead and click Submit on this one. So let's pull over and check our result here. So that time the code was a, a heck of a lot faster. We got only 128 milliseconds, and it was faster than about 97.5% of other Python 3 submissions. So although it might not have been the prettiest code and we could probably figure out a way to avoid doing as much replication of the same logic as we did for the odd and even numbered cases, it was fairly efficient. So I hope this provided some insight on how you could think about approaching a problem like this and about how doing a few things to avoid making additional checks you don't have to make can save a lot of computation time. So thanks for watching and keep coding.